What's going on, people? It's your boy Nando. You know what it is. It's the Pound for Pound Boxing Show in association of Dirty South and IQ Boxing. Today, I've got a very special guest, the WBO middleweight champion himself, Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade is going to join me right now, which is waiting for the champ to join me. Live from Rhode Island. Obviously, we're going to talk about the big fight with Liam Williams. Just waiting for the champ to come on right now. Let's see if we can get the champ on. How you doing, champ? Yo. How's it going? I'm doing good. How you doing? Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Wanna... <laughs> trying, to, trying to get this thing going on this stream yard shit, but it ain't working. I don't know. So I'm oh. over here watching the YouTube channel and shit. <laughs> it's never happened before. I don't know what happens. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm watching it now, but I don't know. Whatever. I mean, it's all good. I think my subscription's over. That's why I didn't pay my bill. <laughs> yeah, it's my first time being on something like this. But um, yeah, I mean, I I, I try to get it all set up for the future. I hope you're well. Um, my first question is, how's training going? I know you're in. Tra oh, yeah, training's great, man. You know, just um, excited to get back in the ring. And um excited to put on a, a beat down. <laughs> I'm glad to see you happy. The one question I want to ask is um a lot of people saw your interview with Uma IFL a month ago and when when this fight got announced, you, you seemed a little bit ticked off maybe like it came across you didn't really want to fight Liam Williams, you kinda of maybe wanted uh maybe the Billy Joe Saunders fight, for example. Was that was that the case at the time? I mean I think um Every fighter that steps into the ring wants to, you know, fight another elite fighter. And, you know, and that's the stepping stones and, and to make, you know, their legacy. So uh, Billy Joe is definitely a stepping stone to, you know, broaden the future, catapult me into that elite level to fight, you know, and demand the fights like Triple G, who is on the zone, a Canelo who's on the zone, Colm Smith, you know, those guys. And that, that would have put me there. Um, so that's what I was looking forward to do. And I tried everything I can as far as, you know, promoting the fight and doing what I had to do. But, you know, Billy Joe side, you know, was smoking mirrors. They used my name for leverage to get the Canelo deal. And whenever Canelo, how, when has Canelo, you know, um, put in a two-fight deal with, two fighters ahead of time. I ain't never see it. So therefore that just goes to show you like at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not like, you know, upset about Billy Joe's, you know, decision because of course I will go fight Canelo before I will fight Demetrius Andre. You know, it, it's just, just just that's what it is. But for him to sit there and say, Oh, I'd rather fight Demetrius now and then the win to fight Canelo because I'm not going to wait around for May and not and not showcase that or do that, it, you know, is is crazy to me. And at the end of the day, no matter what, win, lose, or draw, the winner of that fight, if he could beat me, then beat me. He's gonna get paid and have a bigger audience and an opportunity when he steps in the ring with Canelo, either or I. So I mean, you know, at the end of the day. But as far as like Will, Liam Williams, it's not like I'm not upset about being a ring. I'm going in the ring. I'm defending my title. I'm getting paid. I'm 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 <laughs> I'm doing what I love to do. At the end of the day, but. It's just, it's it's a sad situation when, like, we're all, not when we, as far as me, but the rest of the fighters um, in the middleweight divisions is sitting there playing and waiting for Canelo to pick them. And it's just like, yo, bro, if we fight each other, win, lose, or draw, the demand becomes bigger. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, if, if you lose to the elite guy, at least you lose to the elite guy. And you can still bounce back and still have fights and move forward, you know? So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a risk, um, of course. The reward is already there. It's big enough. Everybody's getting, you know, making great m amount of money, and they're going to make more. But to sit there and just, you know, wait on Canelo and thinking they're going to get this crazy payday, not having to fight anybody that is an elite guy, is well-known, not, you know, and it's just crazy to me. But as far as for me, like, I'm fighting whoever they put in front of me. I'm fighting whoever's willing to fight me. And Liam Williams is, you know, has 
worked his way to the opportunity to get in the ring with me. And congratulations to him. And now it's time to show down. He was running his mouth. Now it's time to get down and dirty. And I don't hear him bickering like he was before because at the end of the day, it gets real when you step into the ring. There's no more, there's no more talking. And at the end of the day, I'm going to fight whoever they put in front of me. And That's who wants to fight? And who wants to fight? If he wants to fight, then we're going to fight. If he really wants to fight, he's showing he's willing to fight, then, yo, bro, let's make it happen. And I, I, put my, I take my hat off to all fighters, all fighters. But I'm tired of hearing people saying, you know, us fighters don't fight anybody when we do fight people. Just because Liam Williams ain't the most popular guy doesn't, doesn't mean he's not a fighter. Doesn't mean he's not, like, you know, a warrior by spirit. You know, so is that's what I'm going to fight. He probably a, he's probably a better fighter than Canelo's last opponent. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's probably a better opponent than Canelo's last two opponents. You know, at least he's I don't know until we get into the ring. You feel me? Because everything changed once you get in there with tall, black, and handsome. And when you stop feeling that wind and that jab and that snap, and you can't touch me, things start to change. And you know, at the end of the day, listen. I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm, um, this is just what it is, you know, just another another stepping stone in my career to keep pushing forward and making the best fights happen in the near future, hopefully. There was some rumor when the, before this fight got announced. I don't know if you want to clear that up. There was um, rumors that there was, you might have maybe vacated that title to go after Triple G or Saunders. Was that ever the case? Wait, Triple G is in my weight class. At 160, so I don't, I don't. There's a unification about this, so I don't know where vacating comes from, and this whole vacate thing that never came from me. It came from Billy Joe Saunders. I'm correct. Yeah. So I don't know how. I don't know why people. Why are you saying this me or the rumors? But if Billy Joe is saying and saying stuff like that, that means you need to talk to him. He told me he was screaming out there again. Here we go. You know this whole Billy Joe shit. Like I don't know why we still on it, but. He said for me to make the fight happen, for me to vacate the belt to go and actually fight him. If you if you if you know boxing, you know the rules of boxing. Did Canelo have I have to vacate the WBC to get this fight he just had for the WBC? So I don't know what people are talking about. Common sense is common sense, facts That's is that. facts, lies is lies, and Billy Joe is one of them, a liar. So I don't know. I mean, the end of the day, that was then. This is now. I got. Uh, something to look forward to that's getting back in the ring down in Miami, April 17, Frank Liams Williams, who, um, you know, is a UK guy. And <clears throat> me, myself, love the UK fans and they support their fighters. And I can appreciate a fighter and, uh, 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 you know, the fans out there. But, um, yeah, as you know, once you, <laughs> when you step into the ring over here, it's a different situation. You'd be surprised. You got a lot of fans in the UK yourself. I oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. They love I, you. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not surprised because when I, I, I feel it, I love it, and I enjoy it, and I, and, you know, when hopefully things, you know, get better with this whole Corona thing, uh, you know, you know, hopefully I can definitely fight in front of the UK fans in the UK. We would love to see that. We'd definitely yeah, for sure. Maybe. Billy Joe Saunders, for example. You know, I mean, I, I have, um, you know, I have, I have my, I have, it's like a little irony going on where it's like, you know, we post a fight, he got caught taking drugs, working with Domino Angle, right, which is Liam Smith is working with too, Will Williams, whatever his name is. And, you know, we did the proper thing of body testing to make sure we step into the ring clean because, like, I'm a clean athlete. Um, I don't take anything to enhance or try to kill somebody. I, do the best and I work hard and it's God gifted talent. Um, if he loses the fight against Canelo, is it really that same magnitude to fight Billy Joe again? You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, it would have been a lot better if we would have fought before then. But, of but um, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's possible. If he wins, you know, I mean, Will he fight me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, will he, like you know, like, will he really want to fight me? That's what it boils down to. Like, will he really take 
you know, the 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 balls that he says he has and show him and show us that he's he's willing to do that. At any weight, at 160, he says he'd come back down, or 168. I'm willing to go up to 168 and fight him there. So, I mean, it's all, it's all good with me. Two days ago, or I believe it was yesterday, I can't remember, but the um, the venue was announced. It's in Florida. Are you happy with that? Was there any other – what was the other choices? Um, You know, my home state, which is, you know, not open as far as, you know – um, contents and stuff like that so that's out that's out the picture um we we definitely want to have an audience involved um uh, you know we have there was like you know in my neighborhood meaning new england you got mohegan sun that's been throwing fights uh but you know there's no audience so florida's open that was the second choice and then i think texas they threw in there but yeah so florida's open they want to allow limited people summer make sure he don't grab a battery come over here um, <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, they're going to allow fans and that's, you know, that's, you know, the gladiator warrior fighting spirits, you know, you know, we're going to do what we have to do, but yeah, you know, fans, you know, we want to have some type of fans with a roaring crowd because when I put these things on people, you know, we like to hear the oohs and ahs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm starting, you know what, as much as I love um, to have the fans, but I'm loving, you know, hearing, hearing that level. I'm, I'm loving, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, know, it's definitely. It's... AOs recently, you know, Oscar Valdez, with the fans, you would have never heard that, the devastation of that knockout, for example. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true, depending on, you know, you know what I'm saying, the microphone setup and stuff like that. But yeah, that's true, too. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's cool. When you're there, you can't really hear as much. On TV, you probably can hear it if you're watching yeah. it, whichever way. But there's nothing like being there no matter what. I take the being there over the sound all day. Of course. Because when, when that shit lands and somebody goes down, you see the sweat going in the shit. Now, that's something to see, you know? So, either way. Do you, have, you, have you been watching more clips about your opponent? Um, when Uma asked you a month ago, I think the, you said the last clip you saw, you saw a few clips maybe when he lost to uh, Liam, um, Liam Smith. Have you been watching more about him and what danger does he bring to the, to the table? Nah, you know, I haven't really got into that stuff. Um, you know, my dad, my coach or whatever, they, they do their thing. I mean, I'm not no fool. I'm going to like eventually watch him maybe the night before the fight or something. I watched like one clip. But like at the end of the day, like I've been fighting for a very long time. There's nothing I haven't seen or people haven't tried to do. At the end of the day, I just got to work on myself, be sharp, and make sure I do what I need to do. And I'll figure out and find the mistakes inside there because just because of what he did to whoever he fought, because of me, he could do it over here. Um, he's had his eye on you for a long time. He's been wanting to fight you for a long time. He said he's, he's convinced that he's going to stop you. Is it safe to say that both fighters may not see the final belt? I mean, listen, everybody I, I've been recently, who Caleb, Ryan Rose from UK, you got, you, you got, you got, UK guys, you guys got the warrior. I tell you guys, you guys know how to talk to talk. You know, everybody, oh, if I touch him, oh, if I touch him, oh, if I touch him, oh, if I put my hands on him, oh, if I hit him, oh, if I hit him, oh, I'll knock him out, I'll knock him out, I'll knock him out. It sounds good, it's cute. It's cute, but I'm, I'm 29 and 0, you know, 18 knockout. But the thing is, is when I touch you, when I hit you, you guys go down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You guys, are, they go down, not me. I just got hit. I just got hit. That's a boxing. I, I expect to get hit. But when I hit you, hit you, it's a big difference. I can hit you. It's how you hit me. I was going to say that because one of, the, one of your first fights I ever won on Sky against Brock Rose in 2014, you stopped him. So you were 18 KOs in 29 fights. Would you say that that's one of your biggest strengths? Is what? The, the knockouts. Your, your, your knockout uh, ratio in, in, in 29 fights. I mean, listen, you know, um, my biggest strength is my boxing IQ, my head. I know how to fight. I'm not no dummy. Um, I, I know how to use the ring wisely and, you know, I'm willing to get into whatever I need to get in to win. And that's all that, that's all that, that's all that matters at the end of the day is winning and, winning and winning and winning and winning and winning. 
That's it. No matter how the win comes, winning is the key. That's all. 100%. Obviously, I'm not one to ever ask somebody to look past their opponents, but being victorious against Liam Williams, what is the goal for um, and Demetrius Andrade after that? Do you want the winner of Canelo and Saunders? Do you want Triple G? You then have um, somebody who is 36 and 0 Mongoya as well in the in the division. Very dangerous fighter. Well, who would who would be your ideal opponent? Who did realistically who would you want? I mean, it's hard. It's hard for for me to you know even want to even think about it. It's, that right there brings stress. Like, oh God, what are we gonna do now? What are we gonna say? Oh God, who, same people we always say, right? And nobody wants to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't, I can't make this shit up. This shit is what it is. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm willing to get in there with anybody. You know, um, I was willing to get in there with Billy Joe Saunders at 168 pounds, be him, right? Because I was going to be him. He did the smart thing. He rather lose to Canelo than Demetrius Andre because he could say he lost to Canelo. But losing to Demetrius Andre is also a great way to go and get your first loss as well. You know what I'm saying? Canelo's not the only one. He's not the most talented fighter out there. Anyway, um, fight him. See if Triple G wanted to unify, go back down to 160 or not, or stay at 168. Um, you know, um, yeah, you, you mentioned Mungia, but, you know, Triple G has his, had his eyes set on him or whatever that situation is. It's hard to go with, with Chalo because he's over there. You know, he's he, he says yes, but in his mind, his body says no. He talks and talks, but doesn't walk the walk. The little Chalo, if he wants to come up to fight, we can make it happen too because we always have the running and we always like, you know, going at each other. So at the end of the day, I mean, you know, um, I got to like, you know, really reach out to people and see who's willing to make the fight happen at that elite level. Now, anybody else lower than that most likely wants the opportunity and the chance, so they're going to say, yeah. They're going to say, yeah. Like, Williams, right now, yeah, he his, his is an opportunity, so he's going to say, yeah. I had my opportunity before. I, w- I want to say, yeah. But I'm looking for the opportunity for the, the, the more elite guys now. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to keep fighting whoever's willing to get in the ring with me first, but they had to earn that. You know what I mean? They have to earn to get in the ring with me. I'm not going to get in there and fight a guy that Canelo just fought because I will get trashed way more than he would if that shit would happen, you know? And they probably wouldn't even allow that if it was in my case. A name I want to bring to you as well is a son of a legend, Chris Eubank Jr. Do you know much about this this fire? Because he's meant to fight Murat... Um... What's his name? The the Japanese guy. And uh, I think it's for a vacant belt. I can't remember which belt it is, but they're meant to fight for a vacant belt. Would you welcome a unification with Chris Eubank Jr. in the UK? If you Chris Eubank wins, and if we can talk about making something like that happen, yeah, I'm willing to do that. If not, I'm willing to go up to 168 and fight them guys up there. Whoever now, you fight. Again, again, Chris Eubank is probably somebody that maybe might not do it, or maybe he will do it. You know, because you know why? It's he's he he knows there's no real uh, there's no you know what I'm saying. That's his opportunity. He has to take the risk. I don't have to take the risk versus Eubank. You because what does that do for me? Yeah, okay, I get another belt, but does it put me in the limelight to fight Canelo, Triple G? Uh, yeah, it probably does because he has a belt. But if he doesn't have the belt, then no. But will he take the fight with me? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have the I can't I can't speak for nobody else but myself. I can't sit here and play if, what if this, what if that, da 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 da. You know, if you bank's that good, then he'll he'll win. So I mean, I don't know. Question for you is um you've been WBO champion for three years. You've you said it you in this interview that you you were willing to do a unification with the likes of Billy Joe Saunders, the likes of Canelo, the likes of Triple G. Are you frustrated that you haven't been able to show how good you are by not fighting these fighters? You've shown them in the 29 fight. Show people to because they didn't agree to the fight with you. 
You know, listen. You know, I can't. I can't like say I'm. 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 I'm frustrated. I'm. I'm in. A, I've been active. I've been fighting. Like you know, I've been. I, you know, because of Corona, I was on a good a activity level. You know, I was getting fights. You know, uh, I can't. I, I can't get paid without fighting, and I don't get paid without fighting. So you know, everything's going smooth. And, you know, I'm healthy. I have a beautiful family. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want that legacy fight. But it takes two to tangle. It ta and, you know, win, lose, or joy. Even on my side, win, lose, or if I lose, you know what? I lost against the, the better man that night. It's no problem. I can bounce back. I'm good enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm good enough. But I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to take it. I'm willing to, like, gamble. I'm willing to put it all out there and make it happen. I'm willing to fight the guy that... I could possibly lose against. I'm willing to do that. Do that, but at the end of the day, they have to want to do that too. And this boxing shit, there's nothing fun about boxing, people. It's boxing is a dangerous, scary sport. So when you step into the ring with somebody that's going to, that could beat you, you think twice about it. Some people do it for the pay. Some people do it for the glory. Some people do it for the risk. And some people... Don't do it because they don't want to tarnish themselves. They don't want business to go down. They don't want their stocks to go down. They don't want to, you know, they and be embarrassed maybe. Yo, boxing is not easy. If it was, that was the case, everybody would be doing it, man. 100%. You mentioned stocks. Um, I, read, uh, I read a little quote from you today. Um, you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong about it. I think it was Boxing Social that put it up. You put Liam Williams. You got what you wanted. You ran your mouth. You got your ratings up, and here we go. April seventeenth, your career ends. Was that your quote? Yeah. You you stick by it. You you think by beating him, that's it for him because back to the drawing board. I mean. You know, at the end of the day, let's just go down the history of Demetrius injury. Everybody had right for it, or has they done afterwards? That's true. You know, I'm just speaking facts. You know, um, uh, Selecki, right? Nobody, nobody knows him. But when he fought Danny Jacob, he gave Danny Jacob a hell of a hard time, and everybody knew him. Everybody knew him when he fought Rosado. It was a good fight. But when Demetrius beat him, nobody knows what happened to him. Nobody knows beat him. Walter Conquer Dakwa, you know, Brian Rose, not to mention Willie Nelson. They're like as my as I got older, as time went on, I got better and I started hitting people with shots and doing damage to these people that who 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 bounced back? You know, who's really who really bounced back from after fighting me? I don't know. Sure. So would you say you're the you're the boogeyman of the of the division? I mean, you know, people want to call me the boogeyman. Cool, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dismantle people. That's it. I'm, the, you know, what I'm saying, and that's it. You know, I, I just hope when, you know, I hope when people get in the ring with me, they get paid a lot of money because it could be their last check at that price. That's it. Because this shit is nothing easy, and trust me, it's going to be them before me. <laughs> I'm going to beat the shit out of you before you think you can beat the shit out of me. And trust me, I'm smarter. And I have the talent and ability and the strength to do it. So that's what I, I just hope, you know what I'm saying? You know, at the end of the day, you know, they they can make a, a, a sustainable living with this shit. Because at the end of the day, I mean, there's no, you know, I like to remind people. There's no health benefit. There's no 401ks unless you do it yourself. There's no union. There's no more looking after you. Nobody gives a fuck. You know, so do the best. Invest. Be smart with it because when it's gone, it's gone. and You can't get it back. Then shit, it's too late. You're too old now. You know, so do the right things with it. As far as fighters, and we're all in a fight. You're in a fight just like I'm in a fight, but my fight is just a little different than your fight. My fight's mean. I'll bite you if I need to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a big difference. But yeah. One question I wanted to ask as well. Um, somebody that myself, that I grew up when I was a kid watching wrestling a lot. I want to know, what was these tweets about Baron Corbin? What, what, was, what was behind that? You know, uh, you know the story. If you guys like, you know, if people were paying attention to the storyline, it was just more like, you know, everybody says they want to fight, 
but nobody really wants to fight. So I was going to move up to 200 and 200 pounds, put on some weight to fight Corbin in the WWE, uh, so I could like you know what I'm saying showcase my 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 bravery. You know what I mean? So I was put, packing up some pounds to you know come climb climb the big rope, you know, and lay the smack down on somebody. That's it. And try you to give them the people's eyebrow. <laughs> well, years ago, I don't know if you are a wrestling fan. Years ago, there was a real boxing match at WrestleMania 14. There was Butterbean versus Bart Gunn. And you know what? Maybe there is room for a real boxing fight in the WWE one day. At WrestleMania, the biggest stage of them all. Maybe. Yeah, why not? But yeah, why not? I mean, you know, um, they did the, you know, e even if it ain't a wrestler versus a fighter, but, you know, they did the Super Bowl weekend. My last fight when I fought Luke Keeler, they had Super Bowl weekend, so it was like you know we had to perform the, uh, the you know to fight. So we can if they have like a combination where you can have a boxing match the day before that, and people that bought a WO ticket could come and watch it just for exposure and whatever. That'd be that'd be tough too, but yeah, I'll get in there and um, I'll be Corbin up. <laughs> We'd love to see that. Oh yeah, hopefully, and then hopefully I have my. My boy, the real one, you know, we could jump him on some tag team shit, but yeah. <laughs> I know we, we already covered Saunders Canelo, but I just wanted to ask you, do you have a prediction for this fight, personally? Wait, say, yeah. my fight? That's right, the big fight, Saunders Canelo, in your opinion, just uh, a prediction for it, as a boxing fan. Yeah, I mean... um. You know, watching, watching, um, watching Billy Joe's last fight against Martin Murray, you know, he, I'm good. He, you know, didn't look like you know Canelo. I mean, um, uh, Billy Joe has what it takes as far as pop. His inside game, you know, don't really seem like he has anything there. He's so off. Billy Joe, you a little girl when it comes to punching. You throw pillows. You're a pillow thrower. And you want to run all day and throw pillows. And then you want to get out the dog fight and go around and run around and throw pillows and shit. But, um, you know, maybe throwing pillows might, you know, do it for him. But I think Canelo's going to be able to get to him, maybe walk him down a little bit. Listen, you got to – you really have to manhandle Canelo, beat Canelo, and, and, and show the judges and everybody else you probably be going against. Not just so, Canelo, everybody else you might get caught yeah. against. You know, so I I don't think Billy Joe has all of it to do that. So, you know, that's just my opinion. I think Canelo wins. I'm not saying by knockout. I would say he probably could go to decision. You know, I don't know. Um, but um may the best man win. And at the end of the day, like I said, stepping into the ring is nothing easy about it. And uh, I'm happy for both of them. Happy for Billy Joe. He finally got an opportunity to like sh showcase if he's good or not, and and he'll be take you know hopefully he's making some good money to you know live out the best of his days. <laughs> I don't know, you know, you know. Set up a fight with yourself. Yeah, of course. You know, shit's a different. That's a different fight. You know, I mean, I'll fuck him up. <laughs> We would love to see that fight. Whoever wins, we would love to see that fight between you and them. You get if you beat Williams, that would be a great fight. Whatever happens. Yeah, for sure. And when I beat Williams, yes. <laughs> uh, Williams, Williams, Williams. I'm happy for you, man. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you, man. You get a payday. You get a bonus. You get an opportunity. You got to get like something. But yo, you not. This is not the train, bro. You're not. The, you're not stopping this train, bro. There's no, nothing. I got too much. Go. I got. It's just way too much over here, bro. It's cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like the drive. I like the hunger. I like. I like it. It gets me happy. Bring it on. You know. Thank you. And thank you again. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, bro. Like. Nah, this is you're not. This is not. This train is not going nowhere, and it's William is not the guy to stop it or slow it down. Sorry. What one question I ask all my guests, and the reason I ask this is because the biggest heavyweight fight since Ali Frazier has just been agreed today. AJ versus Fury, not once but twice. 
I know AJ's your stable mate, but I've actually interviewed a lot of matchroom fighters and a lot have gone swerved the other way towards Tyson Fury. What's your opinion? Only one opinion for the first fight. Who wins? Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury? Um... Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> like, man, the best man wins. Like, that's, you know, whoever wins, wins. You know, as as far as you like fighting style, Furby can box. He knows how to, you know, he, he know how to weather the storm well. You, you, you've seen him take good, big punches from Deontay Wilder the first fight. You see him the second fight, got smarter and did what he had to do, whatever the situation was. He did it, he made it happen. Um, Joshua showed, you know, he he got hit, he lost, he came back, and to me he ran all night and with a jab and it was like, Oh my god, oh my god, Joshua, oh my god, oh my god, yay, yay, he got it again. And he's like, you know, I didn't see the dog when he I didn't see the dog. I didn't see him try to hurt any Ruiz or nothing like that. So, you know, I know Tyson Ferry is gonna be able to put pressure, take pressure, and move and box around because we've seen it happen. When we seen it the other way with Anthony Joshua, he didn't come through. So, I mean, may the best man win at the end of the day. That's it. Tyson. But if I would fight any Ruiz, I'll be throwing I'll be throwing a lot of pillows at his pillow down below. You know what I'm saying? That's one heavy way I could beat any Ruiz. Let's make it happen. There you have it, guys. <laughs> I can't the get these guys to fight. I can't get these guys to fight at 668. Six, I'm moving up to heavyweight. Any Ruiz, let's make it happen. And the winner face is uh, Baron Corbin. <laughs> Champ, before I let you go, my, my colleague Jermaine, who's part of Pound for Pound, he actually interviewed Liam Williams recently. And at the end of the uh, interview, he said to him, do you have a, a message for Andrade and Eddie Hearn? He just said, be ready for the takeover and a start of a new era. Do you have a last message for Liam Williams and Dominic Engel? May the Lord be with you. Travel over here safe and sound. And when I see you, these will do most of the talking. And yeah. <laughs> Come on, babe. Come on. Listen, guys. Listen, it's me again. <laughs> it's me again. That's it. We can't wait I for the. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. We can't wait for the fight. We, obviously, the UK fans, Andrade fans, Williams fans, neutral fans. William can never look like this. <laughs> he can never look like not even on a bad day. He can never look like this, bro. You, nah, bro. No, sorry, bro. Nah, this never, bro. never look like this. Bro. This is something else, bro. It's hard walking in these shoes, kid. You think you? Yeah. I thought I thought Selecki was a beluga whale. This, that he definitely looks like a beluga whale over there. I'm going to I will beat his ass, yo. Oh, he gonna be that, that ugly ass face. I want to punish him. I want to punish you, Williams. I want to punish you. You talk mad shit. You talk mad shit. You said shit that was disrespectful. You threw you threw you threw my this right here is called locks. You said dreads dreads. You know what dreadful means? You said a lot of racial shit. And you said a lot of dumb shit. And you said a lot of shit, bro. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. That's it. Champ. Sure. I want to say thank you for joining me today and giving me the opportunity to speak to you. It's an honor to speak to you because I've been a big fan of yours for years. And you know what? I'm a neutral fan. So I wish you and Williams... The best of luck on uh, April 17th and may the best man win. Thank you and I appreciate your patience and, you know, keep doing what it is that you need to do to have a good life yourself, man, and stay healthy. Thank you and stay safe, All right. champ. All right. Ciao. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs>